No, don't eat that. That has saturated fat. Don't you know that's going to clog your arteries and cause a heart attack or a stroke? And doctors say that when they look at the plaque inside the arteries when it builds up, it looks just like cheese. Is all that true? What's all this stuff about saturated fat? Well, we're going to talk about it in this video right now. Hey everyone, it's Stephen Lohm, Lifestyle Medicine Cardiologist, and let's get all deep into saturated fat. Ooh, not that deep. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss any of my future videos. So let's get into it. What is saturated fat? Well, saturated fat is a kind of fat that is saturated with hydrogen atoms, which makes double bonds in the structure. This results in the fats being solid at room temperature, like coconut oil or butter. Where does saturated fat come from in the diet? Well, 90% of saturated fats come from animal-based foods, such as meat, eggs, dairy, and seafood. Only 10% of saturated fats in the diet come from plant-based foods, such as nuts, seeds, avocado, coconut, oils of many kinds. And saturated fats are not an essential nutrient. It's not something that you require to eat in your diet. So let's talk about whether or not saturated fats really put you at risk of having heart attacks, strokes, and dying. There was this researcher named Ansel Keys. He did this study that was called the Seven Countries Study, where he looked at dietary patterns across the world to try to figure out what would make you die if you eat it. His research clearly showed the higher the fat in the diet, specifically saturated fat, the higher the risk of death. Now people didn't want to hear this, of course. Butter is what people love to eat. Fat tastes great. Now People don't want to hear this. They want to hear that they can eat butter because it tastes good, but that's not the truth according to the science. This has resulted in a huge misinformation campaign where it's marketed to people, go ahead and eat butter. There's different reporters that write articles that say, don't worry about it, butter is back, you can eat it all you want. And you know what? This is no different than what the tobacco industry did back in the 1930s and 40s and 50s when they were advertising that it's okay to smoke and doctors promote cigarettes even though the science was very clear that smoking tobacco was horrible for your health. Now the same thing is going on with saturated fat. People make it look like there's a debate in the scientific community. There is no debate. They try to question Ansel Keys and the Seven Countries study. Well, check out this white paper by the True Health Initiative. It goes into great detail about how the seven country study was a very legitimate research project, which clearly links saturated fat to overall death. The seven country study, as well as a lot of other research afterwards, has led to many major organizations saying saturated fat is bad for you and you should limit it, such as the World Health Organization, the American Heart Association, and the American College of Cardiology. Now the American Heart Association says you should limit saturated fat to 5%, maybe 6% of total daily calories. But remember, saturated fats are not an essential nutrient and you don't technically need to eat any. So should we eat any? Well, the American College of Lifestyle Medicine says we should eat as little as possible. And this is in alignment with the National Academy of Medicine that said that they did not set an upper limit for how much saturated fat is safe to eat because any amount that you eat above 0% of energy will raise your LDL cholesterol numbers. And this is why dietary patterns such as the Ornish diet, which is essentially saturated fat free, have been shown to reverse heart disease and it's the only diet that's been shown to do this. Remember the Ornish diet is a plant-based diet. Let's see where saturated fat comes from in your diet. The number one source in America is cheese. Butter is very high in it, so is red meat. Even chicken has significant saturated fat and those tropical oils, coconut and palm oil. But look at plant-based foods, almost no saturated fat. And just because something's labeled organic or grass-fed doesn't mean it's not gonna have saturated fat in it. Now remember how critical it is for you to get your LDL cholesterol down to prevent your arteries from clogging and prevent heart attack and stroke. Optimal LDL cholesterol numbers are probably somewhere between 30 and 80 in order to be sure your arteries don't clog. Now these people spreading misinformation about saturated fat, they foo-foo off the importance of LDL cholesterol. They try to say, ah, don't worry about it. Come on, man, check out my video called Keto Kills if you really want to learn the science behind why those statements are wrong. Well, check out this consensus panel statement from the European Society of Cardiology. They go through eight major lines of evidence and thinking 
that very clearly link LDL cholesterol to causing clogging of arteries, heart disease, and stroke. There is no question about it. LDL cholesterol is bad if it's high. If you just look at this example, if your LDL cholesterol is 125, by the age of 40, you have a 1% risk of a heart attack, by the age of 60, a 4% risk, and by the age of 80, a 16% risk of having a heart attack. Now, what if your LDL cholesterol was much higher, say 160? Then, by the age of 40, you're at 3% risk, by the age of 60, 16% risk, and you're off the charts by the age of 80. How about somebody that can keep their LDL cholesterol way down, such as around 60? Well, in this situation, by the age of 40, you're significantly under 1% risk, by the age of 60, still under 1% risk, and by the age of 80, still under 1% risk of having a heart attack. Here is a graph showing primary prevention clinical trials, where each dot represents thousands of patients in a randomized controlled study, and the LDL cholesterol you need to achieve to lower your risk of a heart attack down to near zero is 55. This is a similar graph for something that we call secondary prevention. Somebody already had a heart attack or stroke and you're trying to prevent the second one. Each dot represents thousands of patients in the clinical trial. And in this scenario, once you've had an event already, you've got to get your LDL cholesterol down to near 30 in order to reduce your risk to close to zero. This is why the guidelines from the American Heart Association, the American College of Cardiology for the primary prevention of cardiovascular disease recommend a plant-based diet for prevention. Remember, a plant-based diet is going to be very low in saturated fat, especially if you do it the right way, limiting higher fat plant foods and limiting most oils, including for sure fried foods. So remember, saturated fat is not good for heart health. It increases the risk of heart attack, stroke, and overall death, and the science is very strong. Both animal-based saturated fat and plant-based saturated fat increase risks. That's going to be a topic for a future video and any amount of saturated fat that you eat will raise your LDL cholesterol number, any amount. So there's technically no safe amount according to the National Academy of Medicine statement. Remember, the Ornish diet is almost saturated fat free. It's whole food, 100% plant-based, and that's oil-free, limiting the higher fat plant-based foods. The closer you get in that direction, the lower your heart disease risk is gonna be. Not everybody has to go that far, but that certainly is a very healthy option for people who want an aggressive approach or are trying to reverse their disease. Remember the American Heart Association, the American College of Cardiology guidelines for the primary prevention of cardiovascular disease recommend a plant-based diet. So the conclusion is very clear. A whole food, plant-based diet that's a little bit lower in fat is ideal for heart health. So don't eat that saturated fat. I hope you guys liked this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, turn on the notifications, and tell me in the comments section below, what are your thoughts? What are your experiences about eating saturated fat? How it affects your cholesterol number? And what are some of the crazy misinformation things that you have heard? Stay healthy. See you next time.